As an adult, when have you found it necessary to lie to your parents for the sake of your relationship? I like baseball sometimes. But my dad could go to a game every single day and I'm just not into it that much. He calls me up once every two weeks to go to a game and I always say yes. I've cut class. Broken dates. Called out of work. And feign an interest in something that I'm not extremely excited about just so I can spend 3 hours sitting with my dad. We don't have anything in common outside of sports and most things turn to arguments. But I'll always lie to him and pretend to be excited about a game so we can have just one thing that's ours. My mother is a bit of a helicopter mom. Well meaning. But not above lying to me in an attempt to save me from getting my feelings hurt. She initially opened my acceptance letter to college. So she could get rid of it if it was a rejection. She then tried to claim they must have opened it at the border. But I called her out on it. The worst was when she called my college program coordinator to accuse them of setting me up for failure. Then tried to hide it. It was a bit of a shock when I went for a meeting with the coordinator and it started with your mom called. As a result. I lie by omission to my parents whenever there is something serious going on. I handle the problem. Then I tell them what happened. I can't really go to them for advice anymore because I just don't trust my mother. When she asked me if she had been a good mother when I was small. I put aside all the childhood hurts and assured her that she had done fine. I bought a 23M kit. Told my dad about it and submitted my kit. Got the results back and found out I have a half sister I never knew about that is apparently my dad's daughter. Dad asked if the results turned up anything surprising. No. How much credit card debt I acquired when I was laid off from my job right after I bought my house. 2.5 years of living off basically credit cards was rough. Finally back to a point where that isn't a requirement and paying it off quickly. My mother would be devastated. How much we talking here? Close to $20,000. Not as bad as it could possibly be. But I was raised to only spend what I could pay off. My mom is a chronic worrier. I hate lying to her but when I'm traveling she gets super anxious and wants to know where I am. And where I'm staying all the time. I usually lie to her and tell her I'm staying in nicer places than I usually am. Or in general I don't tell her when I'm traveling. Also try not to let them know about my financial woes and cheat like that. Nothing really to do with our relationship. It's just so they don't worry. My mother literally worries about everything. To the point where anytime I wanted to go anywhere she'd be like oh why today why are you doing this to me? Mom, what's with all this rope in your closet? Me, it's for climbing. It's not for climbing. Anything about politics or religion. We have very few beliefs in common. And we are all very opinionated on those subjects. They usually ask who I'm voting for, which is out of bounds. In my opinion. And I always just say that I haven't made up my mind yet. Religion. My parents are very religious and raised me in the church but I pretty much dropped it as soon as I left home. They don't know. Sorry. This is second hand. But struck me as so you've got to be kidding me that I have to share. I met a trans girl through my work. An attractive young western born nation who you would never guess was born male. We became friendly. And over coffee one day I asked how her parents took her transition. My mom's okay. But my dad doesn't know. But I thought they were together. They are. But dad was born in China and is kinda old fashioned. So. It turned out. Whenever she visited her dad, she'd wear a loose jacket and no bra, tuck her hair up under a ball cap, and lower her voice to a more masculine tone. And dad was clueless. He'd talk to his son about his life and goings on. And she'd just feed him a line of BS. Because she wasn't about to share stories of working as a cocktail waitress and what she did with her boyfriend. Full stop. I'm pretty open with my parents but my grandfather died believing I was gonna become a stepmom to a wonderful little girl and to crazy boys by eventually marrying a man I was crazy about. Who dumped me less than a week before grandpa died. At home. 
of prostate cancer that had spread to his liver and his lungs before it was found. X said we weren't spending enough time together. Because I'd spent the last week doing a full schedule of college classes and then commuting an hour to spend nights taking care of my dying grandfather at home. Because he refused treatment and pretty quickly reached the 24 stroke 7 care stage. I never told grandpa. Because that time wasn't about me. And he didn't need to be sad for me while he was dying. My father is a retired Southern Baptist chaplain. He had his own church before getting back into the army. My mom is also from a thoroughly Baptist family. I am somewhere between atheist and agnostic. But mostly just apathetic. My parents think I'm still Christian and that I just don't like churches. The truth would just hurt them. So I still bow my head during prayers and show up to church on the important holidays. Why my dead bolts always locked when I'm expecting her over? Oh. Sorry. It's been sticking lately. Must be broken. In reality. You may not barge into my ducking apartment because I'm a grown person now and my property is not your property. My spouse is from Philippines. Her family constantly asks her for money to the point where she can't even afford to treat herself. She and I were becoming very stressed as bills piled up. She told her parents that she was laid off and I was the only one bringing in money so that she does not feel obligated to send money back home so consistently. Her 12 siblings are more than capable of making money. So now they are being asked to contribute more. To put this into perspective. It came to a point where she was sending 3 stroke 4 of her monthly income to Philippines. Her siblings were nowhere near this amount. She also bought some farmland for them so they can grow their own food and grow crops to sell. She plans to have a motel or hotel built for more consistent income for them. That me and my ex used to do blow together. Like. We weren't addicted or anything. We just weren't very social at parties. We'd sneak off to go to the bathroom or someone's bedroom. People would assume we'd just be ducking. But we were doing lines off the counter so we could actually keep a conversation going with other party goers. As far as I know. My parents only know that I smoke weed up. I don't do anything but smoke nowadays. But it's still something I never plan to tell anyone in my family or mayo. Part of being an adult is acquiring skills so that lying is seldom necessary. Steer the conversation. Change the topic. Set boundaries. And keep polite distance. That requires both parties to be adults. People who behave like children in private usually mind their manners in public. So one way of managing difficult parents is to meet them in restaurants and among groups of people rather than privately at home. This is part of keeping polite distance. Of course some individuals refuse to go along even with that. In which case lying to keep the peace is pointless because there will be no peace. Then the choice is whether or not to interact with a toxic individual at all. Right now. Wife and I have had a rocky first year of marriage. Decided to separate. I've been at my parents for 5 weeks now. I plan on giving my wife space for another few weeks. If she still doesn't know what she wants I plan to file for divorce and get on with things. I've been paying my one stroke two of bills for our house. And stacking the rest of the cash just in case. If really sucks. But I am glad my parents are there to help me. I fell into a very deep depression and they are lifting me up with positivity. They got me back into the gym. Getting healthy sleep. And being there to talk. Okay I'm only 20 and live at home in the summers but I'd like to think I'm an adult. One thing my parents are super strict on is Drew Gus. Now I'm not talking hard Drew Gus. I'm talking about weed up. I'm no stoner and certainly don't smoke that often but my parents would never be okay with it. My mom has always expressed concern with it and has always been suspicious. Mostly cause she's just a worrying mom that doesn't know what her kids are doing away at college. But she absolutely refuses to change her stance. She thinks marijuana is like the worst thing ever. Sometimes I just wish she'd smoke some and chill the duck out. That I like my boyfriend's parents more. My parents were great. They weren't abusive. But they were just emotionally absent. I've only hugged my mother a handful of times and I don't think I've ever touched my father. 
Miso's parents on the other hand. They treat me like their own daughter. Both of them bend over backwards to help me. And I don't leave there without at least 3 hugs. It helps that they're closer than my family. But my parents would be wrecked if they knew just how much more I enjoyed being with his family. About anything medical at this point anyway. My mother doesn't really rate my medical issues as anything except psychological regardless of the MRIs. Physio. Neuro rehab. Medications. Doctors and demonstrated physical problems. As well as history of physical problems. There's a lot of you could do it when you were younger. You should be able to do it now going on. Not how a seemingly progressive impairment works. So. Until it is clear what's going on and I have doctors and medical support to confirm I'm not having the it's probably MS conversation. Most of the time. My dad is what I call a minefield parent. You never know what tiny thing will set him off. His mental health has been deteriorating. And I'm hoping he doesn't become violent. But it seems like a possibility as of recent. My best friend just lost his mom to an extremely rapid early onset form of Alzheimer's that turned her psycho violent. When they finally got the money together to get her into a specialized care home. It was too late. And she died months later from undiagnosed ovarian cancer. I lie to my mom when I go on dates hang out with male friends and just pretend I went somewhere by myself. From certain things she said over the years. I've sort of gathered that she was in an abusive relationship with a boyfriend when she was younger and she's extremely suspicious of any guy that tries to get close to me as a friend or otherwise. Unfortunately it doesn't even put her at ease if I hang out with gay friends because she can also be pretty homophobic at times. Comma. I can't win. Of course dude. So my mom is such a controller. I lied to her about my relationship status and when she found out. She literally flipped a rich and demanded that I show her all the texts I sent and received from my girlfriend. I judge that to be a breach of my girlfriend's privacy. Especially since she's an adult so I refuse to which my mother dearest told me to get out of the house. Like literally pack your sheet and leave. So I did. My aunt. On the other hand raised me when I was a baby so she's like a second mother to me so I never had the will to tell her I was homeless bc I knew she would worry the bejesus out of herself so I just lied about it and I've lived in my car for a year. Working and studying. Unfound out in the end but oh well. Pretty much my entire life. But as soon as I turned 18 and was gearing to move out. I dropped the facades and lies and she interpreted that as me being full of hate and anger. I'm 21 now don't know where she is but last I knew she was homeless working minimum wage at a nation supermarket that abuses her. She has suffered so much in her life and I've been there with her through some of it but I can't be a part of it any longer. I love my mom but for the sake of my own life. I needed to make the decisions I've made. Smoking. It is one of the hardest habits to hide. I found that I had to keep so much from my parents that it was better not to talk to them at all. They live in a dream world where they were good parents and Jesus is the answer to everything. And I'm never going to convince them that those things aren't true for me. I told my mother I forgave her for the awful things she did during her divorce with my dad. I forgive the verbal abuse. But I will never forgive her for abandoning our 16 year old family cat in a townhouse without food. Turning her over to the humane society. Knowing she'd be euthanized. Was the worst thing I've ever had to do in my life. My mom is a super hoarder and I don't tell her when I'm in a relationship because I honestly don't want my partner to see her like this. I hate visiting her home. I don't know what happened to her and I've tried helping but she won't let me throw anything away. Not even the trash is trash to her. Recently at a family reunion she was telling some family members that she thinks I might be gay because I'm 37 and haven't dated anyone in such a long time. Sadly. Nearly everyone she told has actually met some of my girlfriends over the years. I'll probably get downvoted to hell and maybe I deserve it.